Hello, hello. All right. Day four. Are you ready to talk about your stress? It's so much easier said than done, especially on the other side of this mic, but um, it's important and that's why it's in this week. So let me make sure that all my stuff is working here. Looks good. Be sure to uh, chat with me in the Q&A today and let's get started. So <clears throat> All right. Yesterday we reviewed your metabolism, right? You noticed I sprinkled a little bit of stress in there just so you started to be aware that this is a big topic and we need to really take it seriously. Um, it's important. So today is going to be all about stress and this is the Achilles heel to your weight loss efforts. If you want to lose weight, you have to manage your stress. Unmanaged stress with weight loss efforts can sometimes yield initially some success. Hold on one minute. I want to check this Q&A. Okay. Naked carbs. Got it. I wanted to make sure since I got a comment right away that it wasn't like, I can't hear you or something like that. Okay. Um, so unmanaged stress with weight loss efforts can yield it some success initially. And usually this is because you're making some changes with your food and you're reducing some inflammation that food stress was causing on your body. But when it's talking about, when we're talking about psychological stress, you, if that goes on unmanaged while you continue to put your body into a calorie deficit and try to lose weight, eventually it's going to stop, right? Because what is stress? Stress is not safe. Stress is a signal to your body. Things aren't good here, right? And weight loss itself is a stressor on the body. We tend to think if I lose weight, then my body will be healthy. If I lose weight, then things will be good. But weight loss is a stress on your body because your body is having to go through extra work to maintain life, to keep you up and going. And while it's having less food on board, while it's in a calorie deficit. So weight loss itself is a stressor, is a stressor. Um, and eventually your body's going to fight back. So let's talk about what happens when you are experiencing stress. So you can understand how it actually affects your weight loss, because when you know better, you can do better and you can start seeing yourself with some compassion and self-love instead of saying, what's wrong with me? Why is my body like this? This is horrible. Why can't I just get it together? Right. Tomorrow we're going to dive into that. Um, so let's say you're walking through your hallway at home, putting away laundry, right? You're feeling good. You're peaceful. You're out in la la land. And little do you know, your little seven-year-old is hiding, uh, behind his closet door. And when you open it, he purposely scares the bejesus out of you with a scream mask on and a costume on and you, um, and you scream and you jump, right? You have a reaction from that. So immediately your brain senses danger. You jump, you scream without thought. You don't think, oh, I'm scared. I need to jump. You don't think, oh, I'm scared. I'm going to scream, right? It's an involuntary action from your sympathetic nervous system. So this involuntary action releases adrenaline. So you are in your fight or flight, right? We often know what is, um, we are often, um, oh my gosh, I'm looking outside and it's snowing for the love of Pete. Um, <laughs> And I'm dressed today. I'm dressed this morning. I was like, what should I wear today? I'm going to dress like the future self of me that is living in 70 degree weather. And now I'm cold and I'm drinking coffee because I'm trying to warm up and it's snowing. All right. I digress. Here we go. Back to, um, the, the fight or flight system, right? So, you know, like when we're in fight or flight, we're in a stress response. The thing I want you to also be aware of is that women, especially don't tend to always be in like what seems to be a fight or flight response. We also go into something called freeze or fawn. And I want you to remember this because oftentimes our symptoms of being in a stress response aren't always being in fight or flight, right? Sometimes it's being in freeze, which means that you just have the inability to do anything. You're so overwhelmed. You just can't take the next step. 
for me, this, this is me. Like if I'm overwhelmed and tired and exhausted and stressed out, I will sit on my phone and I'll just scroll and numb everything away because I can't take the step to do the next thing, right? My, I'm just so overwhelmed. The other one is fawn and fawn looks like doing, doing, doing for others and putting yourself last, just looking for that immediate gratification for others to feel really good and using that as a way to make yourself feel good. So both of those can be symptoms of being in a, um, a fight or flight response. But back to your kid jumping out of the closet, scaring you. So your heart rate increases, your muscles tense, and your breathing becomes shallower. Glucose is released into your bloodstream. bloodstream. Remember the blood glucose lesson from Tuesday. That's um, glucose that you stored in your liver is becoming very useful right now because your body is trying to get you to move very quickly. So it releases glucose out into your bloodstream. And then your digestion slows so you can redirect energy to move away from danger. That's the whole purpose of that, of all this. It all happens instantaneously. And then you're like, oh, okay. It's just my kid being a kid. There's no danger here. All is good. But what happens after the release of adrenaline and adrenaline is what you feel, right? You'll feel your heart rate go up. You feel your muscle muscles tense. You feel that scared feeling that's adrenaline. But after that, what happens is then your body goes and it releases cortisol just in case your body doesn't know it's just your kid. Your body knows that you were just scared. And so now it's going to make sure that you are okay. And your body always has your back. Your body is always doing what it needs to do to keep you alive. So now you have cortisol released into your bloodstream from your adrenals. We talked a little bit about adrenal adrenal health too um, yesterday. Your adrenals are those little organs on top of your kidneys. And what I want you to know about your adrenals, whenever you hear me talking about adrenal health, is that this matters for your weight loss. So cortisol is released and cortisol is helpful. We talked a lot about that yesterday, um, but we want it at certain times of the day and we want it to support us in a really healthy way, which means supporting energy and supporting sleep. So this is a great example of an immediate sense of threat, but when we're really, what are we really struggling with when it comes to stress? We're struggling with the day-to-day chronic overactivation of your stress response through physiological factors, like the food stress we talked about, right? Highly processed foods, blood sugar imbalance. Remember that blood sugar imbalance spikes and crashes creates a whole lot of stress in your body. It creates an inflammatory reaction every time that happens in your environment. And then also your psychological stressors, just like your day-to-day stress, taking care of kids, having a lot to do, feeling like you're not managing things at work, feeling like you're just never going to be done. So this, um, because both cause a stress response to be triggered over and over again. And so this is called, um, so both, when I say both, I mean, food stress and psychological stress and environmental stress, they all cause this response to happen. And we live in a day and age where it's happening over and over again. And this is called dysautonomia. And this is basically just a dysfunction of your nervous system. Um, This isn't a thing that some people are dealing with. This is a thing that most people are dealing with. And just because you aren't completely aware of most people doing this, this isn't normal. Okay. We tend to think that it's normal to have a stress, have a lot of stress, right? Because we're always told you need to work harder. We're told you need to be busy. We're told you need to do more because, and make more people happy, right? So you become stuck in this overactivation where the stress response, it just keeps going. Why? Because you say yes to everything besides yourself, because you choose foods that are quick and easy because you're reactive throughout your day instead of proactive, because you work 40 hours a week with kids to take care of, because your kids are maybe doing poorly at school or they're misbehaving and you think it's your fault because your husband just doesn't get it. 
because your boss wants you to complete a project by Friday on top of your regular duties that you're already not able to get done because you're out of time all the time and you're nourished and not sleeping well. Sound familiar? When cortisol is hanging around all the time, that's what is that telling your body? It's things aren't good here. Hold on to your resources. There's no burning body fat when she eats because we need to make sure and store it because things don't sound good out there. And when your stress response is triggered too often, it becomes numb to the response of stress, just like insulin. Remember from the blood sugar balance lesson on Tuesday, our cells become numb to insulin because it's around all the time, like an annoying coworker who just doesn't shut up. You just start to be able to work with them talking, right? You're able to ignore them. Same thing with cortisol. When your body produces cortisol all the time, your cortisol eventually goes through the roof. When this happens, when you have high levels of cortisol, you probably have heard this before, but you start to store body fat, right? When your cortisol is dysregulated, when you're producing too much cortisol, you're going to hold on to body fat because your body is producing cortisol because there's too many stress response happening. It's going to make body fat as a resource readily available. And then over time that starts to become numb to that response too. And it's then you start to produce very little cortisol out of protection. And now weight loss becomes really hard. What you've put on during the stress response. So the extra weight from the extra cortisol now likely be, feels impossible to get off because of those low cortisol levels means low energy production, low adrenal output. Cortisol is coming from your adrenals. So low adrenal output means low sex hormone production. That's your estrogen, your progesterone, your testosterone. Low sex horm hormone production means no ovulation, no estrogen, no estrogen detoxification. So that means the estrogen you do take or you do make, um, your body has a hard time excreting it. And then in addition to not having enough estrogen, you end up with this weird thing called estrogen dominance with not enough estrogen. And it feels no bueno. It's not, it does not feel good, right? And you're going to have a really hard time losing weight. And this is often the reason for weight loss resistance. And then you also produce very little testosterone, which means you're even more tired and you're aging rapidly. So it sounds great, right? So it's not just about weight. It's also about your health. It's about the joy and the presence of your life and not just going through the motions. Because when you get to this point, you're going through the motions because of intense fatigue. And the stressors are far more dangerous to your health and causing weight loss to be increasingly difficult. The problem isn't your kids scaring you from the closet. The problem is that you're saying yes to things you want to say no to. You have no boundaries for yourself and you're not managing your day-to-day -day stress. You're always in a stress state and we can't be in a stress state and be in rest and digest, which is the other side of our nervous system. You're either in one or the other. You can't be in fight or flight. And, and in rest and digest, you don't get to hang out in the middle. You're either in fight or flight, or you're either in rest and digest. And what do you think happens when you're in rest and digest productive, safe weight loss, sleep, joy, contentment, confidence, being present, understanding yourself and building trust. All these things that you guys told me, this is what you want, right? Rest and digest is vital. We have to learn how to get ourselves. For one, we have to learn how to manage the amount of things that we're doing day to day. But then the other thing is that we have to learn and we have to teach ourselves how to get out of the fight or flight, how to get out of the freezer fawn, because we can't get rid of all the stress in our life, right? That's just not 
that's not reasonable, right? We can't take away our kids. We have to have them, right? We want to have them. Um, we have to have our jobs. We have to have an income, right? We also want to have our jobs. It's a privilege to be able to have work, but we want to do it in a way that feels really good, right? And rest and digest is a part of my coaching practice and in mindfully well, because if you can't do that, if you can't get yourself into rest and digest, if you can't manage your day-to-day stress, then you aren't going to be able to lose weight. End of story. Plus you want the feeling of weight loss. Remember, it's not going to feel great having weight loss. If you're running around with your head disconnected from your body. And we all know that feeling, right? It's a very ungrounded feeling. And that is heightened stress. And I don't just tell you to manage your stress, right? I give you the tools to help you, guide you, and hold you accountable to them. Because I know what it's like when you leave a coaching session is that you're going to go right back out there into your normal life. And you're going to have, you're going to turn around and you're going to be asked to do another thing. You're going to turn around and be asked for something else in a couple of weekends. You're going to turn around and you're going to think, oh my gosh, there's just another load of laundry to do. Right. And so we have to actually build the practice of doing what we said we would do. And often this, we think like, oh, that means doing my workout. Oftentimes we think, oh, that means eating my vegetables, but that also looks like taking, taking care of yourself in a really productive way and resting when you need to rest and learning the tools you need to get you out of fight or flight and into rest and digest. So there is one other branch of your nervous system. So we talked about the sympathetic, which is the fight or flight. We talked about the parasympathetic, which is your rest and digest. And there's another one that's activated with stress and it's your enteric nervous system. And it's the nervous system that is your gut. That's all related. That's how we have an actual nerve, the vagus nerve that's connected from our brain to our gut. So your gut feelings, they matter. Um, And so I told, I told you briefly what happens with too much cortisol and your hormones, but what about your gut health? Well, if your nervous system is on fleek, what do you think your gut is doing? Not its job, right? It's slowing down because digestion isn't important when you're in fight or flight. It's also breaking down because stress is catabolic. Stress requires a lot of energy and not a lot of energy in a great way. It's going to break down resources. It's going to break down your muscle. It's going to break down your gut lining. When your gut lining starts to break down, it becomes what's called leaky gut. So we have these gut junctions that are nice and tight, close, closely together. So nothing leaves the gut and goes out into your bloodstream where things are sterile inside your gut. Things are sterile outside your gut or sorry, got it backwards inside your gut. It's not sterile, right? Cause you're taking the outside and you're putting it in, but outside your gut things are sterile. We don't need anything going out there, but what happens when that gut lining starts to break down is that those junctions slowly start to separate. And then pretty soon we have little food particles pass through and go into our bloodstream. And this causes inflammation and inflammation is very general, but inflammation feels like crap. It feels like weight loss resistance. It feels like bloating. It feels like headaches. It feels like fatigue. It feels like joint pain. It looks like hair loss. It looks like your thyroid, not working very well. It looks like a lot of things that make you feel like garbage. And when your gut lining is thin, it also decreases your immune system because your immune system is largely located inside your gut. And when your immune system is poor, you allow for pathogens to enter into your digestive system. And now you've got an insane amount of bloating all the time. And now you have newly developed food sensitivities. And you know that really great diet that you're trying to do? Well, you're not really digesting and assimilating those nutrients where they need to go. It's literally going into the toilet. And so this all starts with stress. You can see how it's all related. Your stress is impacting your physical body. Your physical, your physiological stress, your food stress, your environmental stress, chronic stress is junk food for your body. It is being, it is being studied day in and day out. It is, the, the evidence is there. Stress is junk food for your body. So you can see that it not only feels bad in the moment, but it's also a long-term game so, uh, problem. It causes problems for a long period of time. 
Now, this all sounds like a really Debbie Downer thing. I've done 20 minutes of just ranting on stress, right? But I want you to see how vital this is for your health and your weight loss. If you're trying to lose weight, but not managing your stress, you're simply just running in circles and you're going to get tired and you're going to quit. But here's the thing you can start today. It doesn't need to be this drastic thing that you start to implement only on a Monday. You just have to be willing to start asking yourself questions and start answering them. I also have nervous system tools, and I'm going to tell you some of those today, but to get the most bang out of your stress management, you have to find out what do you really want and what are you willing to let go of? Is it perfectionism, right? Perfectionism will hold you to a standard of insane stress because perfectionism can't be achieved. And you're constantly trying to achieve perfectionism by doing things a certain way. And that's just causing more stress because it's it's impossible. You can't achieve it. And so eventually when you um, realize you can't be perfect, you start to realize that you are, you start to feel like you are a failure and then you quit. Right. And that whole system right there is just a recipe for more stress. And there's no stress management going on in there. Um, perfectionism tendencies, perfectionists out there have the highest rate of stress among anybody. So if you're somebody who's always striving to be perfect, you're somebody who needs to start implementing stress management. Um, and this doesn't just come with your, your food and your movement and your diet. This comes with your house, how clean it is, how uh, meticulous your laundry needs to be folded. Uh, what your pantry has to look like, right? These are all little perfectionism tendencies that you know you probably have. Um, being a mom, how perfect do you feel like you need to be a mom? I just had a great conversation with my client the other day who her um, overeating patterns always happen on the weekend. She goes off of her plan. She goes off of her protocol. Um, she basically doesn't do what she said she was going to do. And she doesn't even make a plan for her weekends, right? Because she's so tired. And so then we were like, okay. And the, the thought is always, I need to check out, right? I just want to check out. So we do that with food. We do that with alcohol. And a lot of you would do it in the evenings too. Once your kids go to bed, you just check out. And the thing is that food doesn't ever allow you to check out. There's no permission slip. Once you open that bag of chips that says, oh, congratulations, you checked out, right? That's not a thing, but we, what we, what we're looking for is that actually what we want is some rest and relaxation. We want to feel like no one is asking us for something for a short amount of time. We want to be able to relax. We need rest. We need sleep. That's what we really want. And so a lot of times we're doing things because we think like we're running uh, rampant throughout the week, doing all these things for our kids and our husbands and our household, because we want to be a good mom, because we want to be a good wife, right? That's the reason we're doing that. That's the reason we're overworking because that's the desire we have. I want to be a good mom. That's why I'm doing this. But ask yourself, what does a mom, what does a good mom do? What makes you a good mom? right? What makes you a good mom is doing all these things that you told me that you want, being confident, being present with your kids, being content in your body. It's not scrubbing the floor for a half hour every evening to make sure that you have every single crumb vacuumed up off the floor. It's not making sure that the socks are folded perfectly. Those are not the things that make a good mom. Being, make, being a good mom means that you are present with your kids, that they know that you love them unconditionally that you are well taken care of so that you can love them unconditionally and you can be present for them, right? It doesn't actually have anything to do with all the tasks that you set up for yourself. Nobody's going to, your kids aren't going to sit there at your funeral and be like, I'm so glad that she cleaned the floors every night. They're going to say, I'm so glad that we laughed about X, Y, Z. I'm so glad that we had game night on Thursdays. It's not about the clean floor. It's not about the crumbs. It's not about the folded socks. It's about taking care of yourself so you can be present with your children for a really long time. Um, Toxic positivity, busyness. We were busyness like a badge of honor. If we're busy, we're doing it right. And if we're not busy, we're like, whoa, I'm certainly doing something wrong. I've forgotten something. And then we go and we try to find another way to be busy. And then we complain that we're busy, right? It's this endless cycle. Um, Saying no saying no to things that you just don't want to do. And you don't have, um, you don't have space for in your life anymore or saying yes, saying yes to yourself. I have a little bug in here. So we have to stop letting our emotional world from hurting our physical one. 
there's always underlying reasons why we ebb towards stress. And it's because of a feeling. We want to feel a certain way or desire a feeling. And that's why we seek out the things that make us feel stressed, right? Because we're looking for a feeling that we either have now or we want to have in the future. So let's talk about a couple of my favorite tools. Um, and this is just, a, remember, like there's so much I can go into into these tools, but for the simplicity of this week, I can't go into them very deeply. However, please remember and mindfully well, when you're coaching with me, I'm teaching you all of these and how to do them and how to make them work for your, your life or not make them work because I realize that all tools are not for everybody. So, but here are some things I want you to keep in mind. And these are things that are going to help you get out of the fight or flight and into the rest and digest the other stuff, managing, um, basically what's on your plate comes from you deciding, asking yourself what you want and what you're going to do about it. Okay. So journaling is a fantastic tool. I love journaling. If you've not been a journaler before, it can feel a little weird at first because you just sit down with this paper and this pen and you're like, I don't know what to do. What? Um, but the best prompt in the world is just to, the prompt is how are you feeling today? And to just get it all out on paper. What we have to do is like, I love the analogy of that. Um, our, our minds are like a junk drawer, right? So we have that junk drawer at home that gets overly full sometimes or all the time, right? And so eventually you get sick of it because the drawer just won't shut anymore. So then you take everything out of the drawer, you clean it up, you throw away the broken pens, the endless amounts of uh, paper clips, you keep the good stuff, the book of stamps that you found, um, the functioning pens, things like that. And then you put the functioning things back in the drawer and you throw away things you don't need anymore. That's the same thing with journaling. You get to get whatever's on your heart and your mind. You get to put it all on paper and that helps you process it and decide what's necessary and what's not necessary. A lot of times, um, women will. So for me, I'm somebody, I will avoid conflict with my husband until the very last minute because I take so long to process things. And I've learned enough from myself that, um, I don't want to say something that I actually don't mean. And that just means that I need to process it before I let somebody else, before I put it out into the universe, into somebody else's brain, but a great way to process it before putting it into somebody else's brain is to process it on paper and just sit down. How do you feel today? And just start there. Meditation is fantastic. And this is the way that you get yourself from fight or flight into rest and digest. This is how you teach yourself how to be in that state and how to get out of the fight or flight. Um, I love the insight timer app. I'll put that in the replay for today. So you can download that. You can choose any meditations on there that will be helpful. Um, and just sit down and try to commit to five minutes and see how that goes. And then do 10 minutes. You don't have to be a monk and do hours and hours and hours of meditation to get anything out of it. Five minutes will help you. And one thing I'll always tell people when they start meditating is that you think you're doing it wrong because your mind is distracted and it starts thinking about your to-do list. That's what's supposed to happen. Your mind will wander and then you bring it back. And then your mind will wander and then you bring it back. Nothing has gone wrong. That's actually what's supposed to happen. It's the practice of bringing it back that truly is the meditation. Okay. Breath work. This can be phenomenal, especially for someone in a deep fight or flight response. Uh, we work on breath work saying, no, what don't, what do you want? Right. Um, the sauna can be fantastic, but if you're going to the sauna, here's my rule. You don't bring your phone in there. You don't bring your work in there. You only go into the sauna to sweat. Cause it's a release of, it's a release of physical toxins, but it can be your release of emotional toxins too. And then, um, you go in there to release. You don't go in there to consume. Um, yoga, yoga is phenomenal because it was actually created to be able to re to move energies out. So remember that emotions, stress is energy in motion. If you want to move that out, a fantastic way is to move your body. So movement can be in any way, shape or form that feels good for you. Walks. We talked about walking earlier this week. I totally recommend doing that. Um, lifting weights. We talked about that yesterday. That can be a stress management tool, but then yoga, because we have chakras along our spine and chakras are little energy centers that hold energy and it holds bad energy and good energy. But yoga, the yoga practice is the actual movement of um, 
moving those, that energy out of the chakras. So that can be really helpful. You want to do a restorative yoga practice though. Don't go in and do a, a hot yoga sculpt. That's not restorative, nothing against that, but it's not restorative, right? We want it to be restorative and then establishing boundaries. And this looks like just basically asking again, what do you want and why do you want it? And boundaries can look different for everyone in your life. Um, but you can also just have personal boundaries for yourself that you just never go beyond. The one thing I'll say about boundaries is that they will never be honored until you honor them your first, yourself first. And you're going to be the hardest one to get to honor those boundaries. Okay. So just start being aware with your stress. What in your life is something that you want to start saying no to? What in your life is chronic stress that needs to be addressed and you can stop putting it off, okay? What I want you to know though, is that it's not easy. So don't expect it to be. And that's why we all struggle with it, right? It won't go away. And that's not the point here. The point isn't to get rid of all of your stress because a lot of your stress is your beautiful, lovely family. <laughs> a lot of your stress is your job that um, is your income and your money. A lot of your stress um, is some is things that you have to do, right? So we want to be be able to do it in a way that you can still take care of yourself. Um, but the point is to make it manageable and to get out of the constant fight or flight, because that's, what's holding you back when it comes to your weight loss. And we want to get into more of the di digest and the rest, because this is where you get to live with joy. You get to live with peace. You get to live with, um, health and be present and have confidence and have the trust you want to have with yourself and with the contentment that you really desire for your life. Okay. Let me read these comments here. Um, fawn, somebody who's in a fawn state, um, you swear the reason you finally got pregnant is because you've figured out how to chill out and reduce stress a hundred percent. Amanda, like I will say it, it's so much easier said than done. Like, oh, just stop thinking about it. And then you'll get pregnant. That's not a helpful thing to say to somebody trying to get pregnant at all. So don't say that to people. But um, once it finally does happen, once it finally clicks for you and you're patient enough to be able to get there, what happens is that your body feels safe enough, right? To ovulate. And I think I said it this week. Uh, I think I said it this week is that I love to use ovulation as a sign of health for weight loss. Yes, I did say that on Monday. I love to use ovulation as a sign of that you're in a state where you can lose weight now, because if your body feels safe enough to procreate, your body feels safe enough to lose weight. And so that's a really good um, a way to know is like, how is your stress being managed? If you're not ovulating, if you're really struggling with infertility, it's likely that your body isn't feeling safe. And that's likely because of all the stress we're talking about this week. Um, want to be able to say no without feeling guilty. Yes. And, um, so as far as, so this is going to, to you. Okay. So one of the things that I always do, and I'm going to go over today. So if you guys need to go, I totally get it. Um, one of the things that I do in my coaching is to help you understand, um, your emotional authority. So this begins in your mind. This begins with a thought. This creates a feeling that creates your actions and that creates your result. When you feel guilty, you are either going to be doing something because you feel guilty or because you want to feel a certain way about your action. So let's use the example of, I'm going to pick up somebody's shift at work because I feel guilty because she said she had her kid's birthday party and I feel guilty if she can't go to her birthday party. So you pick up her shift. So you did it out of guilt right? You did it out of the present feeling of guilt, but then what you receive out of that is the feeling of like, now I feel good about myself. I did a good thing for her. The only thing you're getting out of that is the feeling for you. You didn't actually do it for her. You got it. You did it because you got a feeling that you did something good for somebody else because you can never be in control of somebody else's thoughts, feelings, actions, or results. They're only ever in charge of theirs, just like you're only ever in charge of yours. 
So the feeling of guilt isn't helpful for anyone because you're going to do something, but you're still going to do it so that you have a feeling and it's not for their feeling because you can't ever control their feeling. They always get to control it because maybe they would be mad at you because you couldn't, or you didn't, or you couldn't pick up the shift, but that doesn't matter. Okay. She's still in charge because she could also just not be mad at you. She could also be like, oh, okay. I have different options. Oh, okay. If that's fine. It's my shift. It was my responsibility, right? She gets to take that information and create her own thoughts, feelings, and actions just like you get to. So the only, you don't, you only have control over your feelings. So when you're doing something out of guilt, you're doing some, you're doing so, so that you feel a different way, not so the other person feels a different way. I hope that lands for you guys. Can stress um, management heal the guts? Yes. 159%, 99%, 1000%. Because like I said before, when you are highly stressed, your gut lining is becoming thin. You end up with leaky gut, but your gut um, rebuilds itself actually fairly quickly. So when you start to provide your body with that sense of safety, AKA start managing your stress and start eating properly and moving properly, then your gut lining starts to rebuild. And once your gut gut lining starts to rebuild, then you can start working on um, rebuilding the gut bacteria in your microbiome in your gut. And then you basically heal the gut. So anyone who comes with me uh, with food sensitivities, gut problems, constipation, diarrhea, reflux, things like that, you're not you're not going to deal with that for the rest of your life. We're going to fix that. And then you're going to be able to go out and you're going to be able to eat foods normally. Again, you're going to be able to poop normally. Again, you're going to have good digestion again. Um, I eat fairly well and fairly clean, but I know my gut isn't great. You did do a test. I'm on some supplements to help with the gut stuff, but wondering if this is the piece I'm missing a hundred percent, a hundred percent. You can't supplement your way out of poor gut health. Supplements will help you. Supplements will help heal the gut but they're not going to heal the gut. They're going to help because if you're taking these supplements, but your stress is still out of control, it's still a lot. You're still in fight or flight. You're just continuing to break down that gut lining. And those supplements you're taking aren't actually being absorbed into the gut lining where the problem is, right? So we have to go back to the root cause of why is your gut like this anyway? I just had somebody um, come into mindfully well, that's enrolling. I just did her consultation. And the reason was because she had, she wanted to consult because she had so many food sensitivities. I mean, she had like 20 sensitivities that she was, um, did a test for that said, Oh, you're sensitive to these, but here's the thing. The sensitivities aren't the problem. The sensitivities are the symptom, right? We can't treat the sensitivities without going to the root causes. Why are all these sensitivities here? You didn't just wake up on a Tuesday morning and not be able to tolerate eggs and dairy and cheese and, um, peanuts and, uh, what else was on there? Honey, like things that are like some foods were like healthy. Well, actually most of the foods were healthy, right? Your body just doesn't wake up and decide that I don't like these anymore. Your body's responding to them because the area where you're putting those foods isn't healthy. That's where we need to go. That's where we need to go. We need to start fixing your gut and to start looking at like, why is it responding this way? And, and likely stress is a, is a huge part of it. Stress is always a part of it. Actually. I've not seen anything, um, outside of it. So, um, do hot tubs work like saunas as far as sweating? I don't think so. I wouldn't say so. Um, especially I like infrared saunas because your body absorbs the heat and that's what we want. Um, we want your body temperature to increase to detox. And so, um, I guess your body temperature would increase with hot tubs. Um, but I don't, I can't say for certain. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you Google that one. I don't know. And then Amanda said, makes total sense. Thank you. Perfect. All right, guys. I hope this one lands for you today because it's, it's a doozy of one, but it's so important. Um, again, reiterating, I'm enrolling for mindfully well. So if any of this is hitting home for you, now's the time to apply enrollment is open through next week. Um, it closes on Friday. So we start may the first week in may. 
Um, you do want to have a consultation so I can make sure that, so I can, for one, dig a little bit deeper into you because you get a personalized protocol. You were working on you and it's not a cookie cutter plan. You know, my passion about cookie cutter plans, that's not what this is. We're going to focus on you and what you need based on your past, your present and your future. If you're somebody who needs labs in order to create that very specific, wonderful protocol for you to get your results, we'll talk about that. And then tomorrow we're going to talk about, um, discipline, but also compassion and self-love because you don't usually see those three together and not having those three together isn't helping you not having those three together is working against you. You do want to be disciplined to make the choices and to make the changes in your life that you want to have to bring in those results, right? Because it's not always comfortable and the choices we're making aren't always going to feel good, especially in the moment. We've kind of learned this week that our mind loves comfort. It wants to feel good all the time. And then we um, are also going to love ourselves through this and show our, and decide when is compassion appropriate and when is discipline appropriate? When is love appropriate? It always is. That's the answer. But tomorrow we're going to bring it home with those three. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.